Mesa 520, one way through, right clear for takeoff, right. up here. Full screen is definitely your friend. There are a million different menu screens, the engine screens. Delta 17520, maintain VFR at 4,500 and expect vectors over the uh, top of Charlotte, clear through Charlotte West, Bravo at 45. Down to 4,500, cleared into the Bravo and vectors over Charlotte airspace, 520. And it's easy to get lost on what screen you're on. So, so number four five six six zero Charlotte, you read me? The best way to do this is just hit the full screen mode and then you reset and then you can go to whatever other screen that you want to get to. So full screen is your friend. The second really cool uh, feature to pay attention to with this airplane is the comm uh, frequency here where I can time. This is actually my number two that I'm showing here. But let's say for example uh, I want to bring up Concord, which is I'm going to be at in a few minutes. I can go to find my flight no. plan. Number 4566 six here. Charlotte, you read me? I done. And now i got my frequencies ready to go in here. And again, I can bring up my another frequency. Oh, let's say I want to bring up ground and my number two. There we go. So that's how hard it is to set up frequencies. So again, calm and find to grab all your frequencies, and that could be from uh, the flight plan you're on, the nearest airport you're going to, recent ones, but again, I just love the fact that all the comms right here, and it's a push button, and you're good to go. Now the third one here, I'm coming up on 4,500 feet, so I need to level off. That's my assigned altitude as I cross over the Charlotte Bravo airspace. Now if I'm going to GPSS, from, if I'm going to be in a heading bug, which I will be in a moment, versus if I'm on GPSS, which I'm at right now, I can hit the center dial on this thing, and it brings up the menu page for this. I can push the menu button to bring that up, which is another one to get me to GPSS or not. But if I'm on a weird screen, or if I'm in the middle of looking at something, like let's say I'm here, and I've got Concord in here, And I'm getting set up for the GPS runway, too. I might not want to switch off this screen if I'm ready where I want to be at. So if I need to switch from GPSS to heading mode, I can go over to the G5, 
November 4566 here, Charlotte. And the G5 GPSS will also turn me on or off GPSS to heading mode. That'll make the switch back and forth. So, very cool to be able to switch back and forth just using the G5 as an alternate way to switch back and forth between GPSS and, and heading mode. Now, the fourth really uh, fun part about this that I enjoy is, let's take a look. we got some traffic over here. This is actually a friend of mine, 975 Whiskey. But this aircraft over here, if I click on them, it's going to tell me it's a light aircraft, the altitude, the track is ground speed. So just by clicking on or touching the airplanes gives me the traffic uh, information for it. And I just find that to be really, really helpful and really useful there. The last one that I find to be really interesting in the tools page, we have our verb remote control in here where I can actually set up and I can run the Garmin verb from this uh, for this aircraft. So you can do video in, you can no, actually see what's four, going five, six, six here, Charlie. I don't. So there we go, there's the five features that I find to be really, really uh, helpful in the uh, in the aircraft here. The full screen button, the calm lookup, the touching traffic to get your information for it, running GPSS from either side, and of course the verb remote or video uh, controls right here without having to go to a separate remote control for cameras for, for folks like me. Okay, so with that, now let's talk about five notches might not be quite the right word, but that's pretty good at actually an analogy for what it is. All right, so here are the five gotchas that I've had so far with this thing. First one is on the Bluetooth, and I don't know how well this is going to come out here, but in order to connect to the G3X, I have to manually choose to connect to it every time. There's an option in here in the menu. That would be in uh, Bluetooth. And it is set up for auto reconnect, which is in there. 1752 is right from the pending 090 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 push information from the iPad, or from the G3X, so flight plan information goes down from the G3X down to this thing, which is cool. But traffic information and weather information come only from the 345. So you have to be connected to two items in order to get flight plan information and to get weather and traffic. The other one which is really weird is the direct to button in here. This only gives you information on the 3X if you're using internal navigation. It does not push, con push content from the 3X over to the 650. All right, so this direct two and the nearest, you can't actually use them for anything, and that, to me, is a little bit weird. The other one that I have to pay attention to a lot is because I'm not using the integrated autopilot with this. I'm using the STEC 30, uh, so there's a push between the two. You have to remember that the altitude information is just reference. It doesn't have a climb to, it doesn't have a level off. I've caught myself, my partners in this plane have caught them. Yeah, you know, they set the altitude and we set a climb gradient. We get, we have the expectation it's going to level off, but it's not. <laughs> it's just for reference. So again, if you're not using an integrated autopilot, just those bugs are not there for you. And the fifth and final gotcha is the pilot guides. There's a G3X pilot guide, and there's a G3X touch cer for certified single engine aircraft. Three, five, five, extra, set of fixture, level, industries, reserve for. So the fifth and final one is make sure you have the right pilot guide. I called Garmin yesterday and was talking to them about a couple of items and some questions I had about the, uh, the aircraft. And they caught me that I was reading from the wrong book. I opened up, I did a quick Google search, and I found the, the book I thought it was looking for, the, t the pilot guide. Big difference, apparently, between the certified guide and the experimental guide. So just make sure you have the right one. So that's the fifth gotcha. So those are my five uh, tips and five gotchas for the uh, operating the Garmin G3X, my airplane.